Yes, I, I appreciate that. Love, 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 love. And I've just got to begin by giving you a <laughs> round of applause, personally, myself. Sound of two pairs uh, of hands clapping heart. in the studio. Because trust me, boss, it's been like, wow, wow, wow. Mm. And to be honest with you, if it hadn't been wow, 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 I might have had to cancel this. <laughs> in danger of telling someone Fair about enough. their own craft. Fair do you enough, know what I mean? No, and, and not really knowing anything about it. Um, <laughs> I'm a lifelong, ardent, hardcore Bob Marley mm. fan. Like, literally, this guy's music and legacy and culture literally sound... Uh, bookends my career, if you like. I grew up and got into music listening to Bob Marley records, so, oh my word. And I guess my first question would be, I'm curious if to as to whether that's been a recurring story for you doing this project, like the passion of the fans not wanting you to mess this up. Yeah, for sure. I mean, everyone was like, you sure you want to sure, <laughs> sure go near Bob? Um, yeah, even myself, you know, just being a, a novice fan, you know, grew up in a, in a black household, so there was definitely Bob all the time. Right. I grew up with a black father and an older brother, so we were the three little birds. And that, okay. That, you know, for sure, you know, so, yeah, you don't mess with Bob. He's just not somebody you want to go go near, um, just because he, he's, he's perfect. He you is. Know, he was perfect to us, and he's, he's a legend uh, for a reason. He's an icon. And so when the, when the script came to me, I was like, ooh, um... I was a little nervous, you know, like, what, what, what's this all about? I had heard right. that they had tried to make the movie for 25-plus years. Wow. I heard names like Scorsese and, and Oliver Stone. Like, if they couldn't make it, you know, you know how, how is it possible? And so the, the first two questions I asked, asked myself was, one, is the family involved? Because uh, I'm not touching it unless they are. And two, did they have the rights to the music? Okay. And, and because I was like, if, I, if I'm going to the theater, I want to hear Bob. That's what I want to hear. And those two things just so happen to be true. Right. My very first call, Ziggy was on the call. Okay. I was like, oh, okay. Like, that's the son. You know, that's, the, <laughs> that's the oldest that's, son. That's the, yeah, that's, you know. <laughs> that's, that's the prince that's, of the Ziggy, realm. That's, that's, you know, I'm, not, I'm like, this, you know. So I'm like, okay, this is, this is real. This is real. And then just we started talking about films like City of God and Monos Pedos and Black Orpheus. And I was like, okay. We're trying to do something different here. This isn't, you know, this isn't your typical musical biopic, which, you know, I like those films, but it's just not ever, ever something I thought I'd go out or try to make. Right. You know, it just wasn't, wasn't in the cards for me. But this, this film kind of fell on my doorstep in that way. And then, of course, I, you know, like you said, I was resisting the idea of even come, touching it, even, <laughs> even with the family, even with the support, because it's Bob, man. Like, how do you, how do you do that? Right. And then I guess I was like, you know what? They're gonna make this movie, with or without me. So I should just do it right. So you started from a partially completed script for the film that you had to work on some more, right? Yeah, that's right. So the first script was written by uh, Terrence Winter and Frankie Flowers, and it was a great start. You know, th there was so much great in that script, but it was a lot. They were they were tackling a lot, and I, and I just knew that I didn't want to do a soup to nuts version of this film, not a cradle to grave. It was too much story to jam in. Right. Two hours, like you could only tell so much about a man's life, and so it was just it just needed that refinement. It needed the the right in and the right out. And I had just come off of a, of a movie, uh, King Richard, uh, with Zach Balin, um, who I thought really cracked the structure of that film. You know, he chose the right window into the Williams family's life. And so I thought, okay, it just so happened that, you know, Zach was a white dude who had dreads and grew up, you know, a oh, mile wow. down the road in Wimbledon, Delaware, from, uh, from, from Bob. Where wow. So he knew Bob. He knew everything about Bob. It another was just, sign. It was just another sign. I just so happened to work with somebody that was a Bob fanatic. And so it just was, it was, it was, yeah, like you said, it was written. So I, I tapped on him to really help me, t you know, tie in that structure. That, right. that was number one, because then that was going to lead what songs were going to go in the movie, what what period of time, what what flashback would ultimately. Now, we overshot, and we definitely, some things ended up on the cutting room floor. Oh, wow. But um, but well, that's another story. That's, <laughs> that's another, another story. Movie. So a central concern for you, in fact, a real decider as to whether you directed this movie or not was finding the right actor to play the role of Bob Marley. Uh, so let's start from the man who was called upon to play the king. Uh, i.e. Bob Marley, Kingsley, world title, <laughs> Ben Adair, who literally four or five years ago, in his own words, he said, I can't sing and I can't dance. Mm. So I guess if I was in the Kingsley circles, I'd have been like, yo, bro, maybe you might just leave that Bob Marley script alone. Uh, but you weren't concerned about Bob, uh, about Kingsley's inability to sing or dance, no? N not at all. Um, well, 
maybe a little bit. But but certainly wasn't the first. It wasn't the most important thing. I needed an actor. I needed an actor that can can portray a version of Bob, the essence of Bob. Um, and a great actor is going to do the homework to get there. I just needed I needed that baseline. I needed somebody that was going to give me the emotion, uh, give me the silence, give me the things that we didn't see on on, on interviews. You know, that someone who was going to reach into the character and really develop that. Uh, and spend the time getting that. And and I knew that from King Richard. I was, wasn't was looking for tennis players. I was looking for great actors. And Kingsley, once I saw his tape, he had the it factor, man. He just had the it. It was the thing that I was looking for when I was looking for a tape, which was I want to lean in. I want to not say no in one second. You just know. Right. Uh, uh, so, like gr- great actors, just not right. Great right. actors, just not right. So many of those tapes, great actors, just not right. And he just was like... Who is this guy? I didn't know who he was. And I was leaning in. And look, I'm not a native Patois speaking uh, person, but he could have had me fooled. Okay. So the baseline was there. And I knew it was like, oh, okay, it wasn't perfect, but it was. It w- there was something in there that was like, okay, he can, this guy can do it, act, can, can get it, he can do it. And look, he's, he's got the look, he's got the intelligence, he's just got that thing um, where you see somebody thinking. Right. Even the way, even where he placed the camera to film himself, you can tell this guy was on another level. Okay. He didn't do the whole, like, three sizes and <laughs> cut it and edit it and give me 17 versions of the... the right. What, like, look at all of this. It was confident. It was, uh, it was cool. And I, it just hit, that was Bob. Right. <laughs> you know, he just had that, he had that. That thing. Yeah. Um, I thought he had an amazing performance deserving of an Oscar for Best Actor. Would you agree? I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't do the awards, but I certainly, um, you know, we try to achieve excellence. And I think he, we, he had a, a high bar for his, himself right. and, and for Bob's family, for Bob's legacy. Uh, so tip my cap. He, he does, he's as deserving as anyone in the conversation, whatever the conversation may be. I'm sure you tried to make the film as authentic and true to life as possible. Um, how did you achieve this and how much were you involved in the authenticity part, if you like? Well, yeah, I mean, look, the films are an extension of, uh, of, of the vision of the director. That's just it. If you feel like you've watched a movie, um, you feel like it's one voice and, and hopefully you feel that. And you see that in, in hopefully all my work, you'll feel that. So from the very beginning, it was... This is the type of movie that I want to make. Again, when you're talking about films like Black Orpheus or City of God, um, you know that you're not trying to do the stereotypical thing. Uh, In this film, we had to juggle Bob's visions. We had to juggle flashbacks. We had to juggle a specific timeline. We had to juggle music and dialect. Um, And how do we do that in a way that feels seamless? Uh, that's part of the magic of making movies, and I have a lot of people to thank and count on for that. Uh, a lot of seasoned crew, a lot of amazing cast members, and part of that is the alchemy of making movies. You know, you can't just have Michael Jordan. We found him. Right. We found him. Michael Jordan had to pass the ball in order to win the championship, and that's that's part of winning championships, but that comes from, obviously, coaching, staff. It, it comes from the, fil- the, the team. If we don't have real musicians surrounding Kingsley to make those things feel real, you have Aston Barrett Jr., who's the son of family man. I mean, you can't get closer to that. You can't get Cannot. closer to that authenticity. Who's also an aspiring actor, his first time on set, acting in any way, shape, or form. You have David Kerr playing Junior Marvin's son. You know, that's not made up. These aren't accidents. Yeah. This was how do we place our actors in real situations the best we can okay. to make them feel so the patois is real when i'm when the camera's off it's real patois right yes true so you so your actors your actors are now in a situation where the, it's real when i call cut they're still playing music <laughs> so it's it's a real situation and so that that's what you're trying to do you're trying to make this artificial scenario real and you were really working with musicians that we often really play on the show. People I personally know, like Naomi Cohen, who plays Marcia, um, Alex Agame, who plays oh, Peter Tosh, mm-hmm. Hector Lewis, who plays Carlton Barrett, we play them on the show. Savannah, who plays Judy Moa, on the show. Uh, Aston Barrett Jr., as you say. Sheldon Sep- Shepard, uh, lead singer of The Nomads, he's on the show. And I've got to give a special big up to Anthony Welsh, uh, who plays Bob's manager, Don Taylor. 
He's someone I've known since a child. Oh, he's, he's, ama he's I used to work amazing. He's amazing. With his uncle. He's amazing. Really, really good. They wasn't wanted he? me to play that role too. And really? I was like, nah. <laughs> you, they wanted you to be uh, yeah, done. You know, I looked like him a little bit, but I was like, man, we need a great actor, man. And Anthony, boy, did he like turn something so small into something so significant Huge. in our film. Really talented actor. Tosin Cole, shot to him too, man. And Michael Ward. Uh, amazing, amazing, amazing cast. Um, so yeah, it, it, it was it was a, a true collaboration in that way. Right. So Ziggy Marley, uh, Bob's olden son, he's a producer for the movie, but not a movie man as we know him. Uh, what was he like to work with, and how involved was he with the um, day to day shooting of the movie? He was on set every day. Uh, it showed the work ethic that the Marleys have. Um, I never saw somebody more committed to a project than seeing it through from start to finish. Uh, phone calls, uh, nighttime script, uh, everything. He was a true producer, in okay. the real world. and and, and like lead, like a big brother. You know, like Ziggy takes care of his people. He's just one of those one of those folks, like feet on the ground, heart in the right place, spiritually guided. Just you felt like you had an extension of Bob on set. The film delivers a great insight into the relationship between Bob and Rita, who was played by Lashana Lynch. Amazing performance. Best Supporting Actress Oscar for her, no question. Uh, how did you research Rita Marley? Was was what she did from the mouth of Rita Marley herself? Or were you kind of feeling things out? Yeah, so, you know, I was fortunate to read Rita's book, uh, which was heavy, man. Um, and I'm glad I did because in the early iterations of the script, Rita was not quite the character that she is now in our film. Um, and I knew that even from making King Richard, you know, Anjanou Ellis's role was underwritten, and uh, and I realized what an important and integral part to Richard's life. She only bolstered that that, and behind every great man, there's a great woman, and that was true, true here. That was true here a million times. Rita, I got the opportunity to fly down to Miami and meet her, um, and just to be in her presence and to feel, yeah, just just how strong of a woman she is, like that strength fiery character like unbelievable and her grace and elegance um and, and and it was that being in her presence which i went into the casting process with so okay. when i when i saw lashana i was like oh okay yeah right yeah, yeah, yeah. He, she ain't gonna take no there ain't no <laughs> she's she gonna be telling me like wait we doing it like, no, she, hey, she's up for it. yeah yeah no we're gonna get this right right like so immediately like from the very first there was no shyness she was immediately like not confrontational, but just like, like, this is what it is, you right. know, and I love that because that challenges me as a director. I have players that want to play. You deserve an Oscar for best director for this movie. Thank I'll you. just put it out there. If anyone's listening, anyone hears me, <laughs> Uno forgive the man, the best director thing. Can you make a wicked Bob Marley movie, Famalan? Me not care which part of the world you come from. As a Bob Marley fan, and on behalf of the Bob Marley fans, the hardcore ones, I can just say thank you and hold these flowers, Ronaldo, thank directly. You. you did it. Also, after the experience, um, what message would you like to share with the world about the man who is Bob Marley? How unique and special um, he was. He was a human being just like us, walked the earth. But, um, but boy, did he leave a message of unity and peace and love for all of us to share. And I think we can all, you know, look ourselves in the mirror and see what, 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 what are we doing for the world? What are we doing to stand up? What are we doing to get up and stand up? Um, Bob left that for us and uh, you know I think this movie hopefully brings us closer to those lyrics and that introspection if anyone everyone needs to go see this movie people if you're listening to the reggae recipe right now and you're a fan or you just have a passing interest in reggae music you need to go see this one the movie is landing on the 14th of February Valentine's Day take your girl take whoever you're loving in your life and go see this movie because this one is proper and if you don't feel it Holler at the dread and I'll let you know. I'll debate as to why I think it's amazing and other people can tell me why not. In the meantime, Bernardo Marcus Green, thank you so much for passing by the show and let's put on our big song <laughs> from Bob Marley right now. Woo-yoo. Thank you, brother. <laughs>